Hello, it's Brett Taylor here from Tour Tactics, and my special guest today is Will Collins. Will is the winner of the PGA Tour Canada's Dakota Dunes Open, presented by SaskTel in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, on the 2013 schedule, and that is the second event of the, uh, the schedule this year. Will fired a final round 66, where he was 7 under on his final 12 holes to win by one over Nick Taylor, John Ellis, and Ryan Yip. Will also played in this year's U.S. Open at Marion and played the PGA Tour in 2009 after a dramatic par-putt on the final hole of Q School Finals to get his PGA Tour card. Thanks for joining me today, Will. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for having me on. So, Will, tell me a little bit about your, uh, you know, your mindset in the in the Dakota Dunes event. You know, I mean, what was your What's your frame of mind going into, maybe if you step back a little bit, do you have a, a certain frame of mind going into this year on the PGA Tour Canada, and did you have any kind of mindset that was set up for this event, or even particularly in the final round as you were kind of getting closer to the win? Well, I had a bit of a boost coming into the event with my my prior event being at Marion at the U.S. Open. You know, coming off such a big event, even though I didn't play well there or score well at Marion, um, I knew that I'd have some confidence coming into into Saskatoon. And I guess, uh, with all that said, I, I just was really trying to stick to a game plan out there, um, a game plan of just, just my mind. I, it is kind of a big key to my, to my golf game. Um, I played the, the tournament three or four years prior, so I, I was real familiar with the course, but I was just out there trying to run some convicted golf routines. Okay. So when you talk about a game plan, are you can you kind of elaborate on that? I mean, is that something that you plan, obviously, before the round, the night before, or maybe a couple of days, and how you're going to play each hole? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, I guess with uh, Calgary being canceled and then another week off, I had a couple of weeks to you know, start being um, visualizing, I guess, maybe be the best yeah. way to put it. Um, I, was a, I pulled out the yardage book before I left. You know, just started taking some time to meditate a little bit on it and picture the shots. Uh, you know, put myself in the situation, remember some of the past years with the wind blowing. And, you know, so it really got my mind familiar with the golf course once again. So when I landed um, late Tuesday night, um, you know, I played a practice round Wednesday just to, you know, get things going. But I felt real comfortable already um, just to enter the week. And... You know, that was kind of my goal was to to come out to come out firing that week. Um, I knew the court the course was going to be super scorable. And we had perfect weather coming, and and uh, I guess just from the beginning of the week, I was just really focused on playing well. So you know, I know you've had some um, pretty good finishes at this event in the past, as you had mentioned, and. You know, given the the cancelled event beforehand, the week before, and had some extra time, as you said, and doing that visualization. So, with your kind of comfort level on the course and the visualization that you were doing, did you actually like? Were you thinking about winning, or were you just focused on playing really well? Um, no, I guess you know, never really focused too much on the trophy. Um, yeah, my goal last week was to, to run as many convicted routines as possible. And I guess by convicted routines, I mean, um, you know, essentially taking one shot at a time, you know, seeing the shot, seeing the trajectory of the trash is kind of what I always use in my ver in my vernacular. But uh, I see the trash and then I kind of fill it with the waggle and then just go and hit a, hit a convicted shot, you know, make a, make a good swing, trusting mm-hmm. swing. Yeah. Um, and really, to I guess to be aware of if I if you actually do that is sometimes the hardest hardest thing. Some weeks you feel like you do pull off a, a routine that was real, you know, convicted. But if you really paid attention, you were, you know, fearing left or fearing right. You know that that evil that evil word fear. I guess uh, was in was in the routine in some way, shape, or form. But um, you know, last week in at Dakota Dunes, my mind was real clear. I was really, uh, I really um, got angry with myself a few times early or, or throughout the event whenever I was hitting some or, or running some routines with some of that fear in there. Um, but overall, uh, it was a pretty successful week. And I guess in you know past experience in my career, 
weeks where I run, you know, a higher percentage of convicted routines usually end on a good note. Okay. So, you know, a couple things there. You know, it, it sounds like when you say convicted routines makes me, f I guess the word that comes to my mind is decision making and just being, you know, committed to a specific decision. And is that kind of a part of getting that convicted routine? Yeah, I mean, I think we've all kind of, you know, hit, hit, those, hit those golf shots where we're kind of hoping or wishing yeah. that it doesn't go in the water or yeah. just kind of being a lie and not really feeling, being comfortable with it and just kind of being like, oh, let's just make a swing here and get this ball up by the green. Right. And then all of a sudden that kind of parlays into more trouble. Yeah. Um, those those type, types of lazy routines are, like, you know, I guess I... You know, Sean Murphy, you guys used to play on the tour, on the old Lobo, um, who played in college, he used to always say, you know, never hope and wish, only know where the ball's going to go. And uh, so that's another mantra that, you know, I use or maybe write down on a piece of paper to remind me. But um, and that, and that kind of got down that road the third round, uh, without a doubt. I was, my mind was kind of wearing down. I got a little tired, maybe a little lazy, hit some shots that way but uh you know i worked real hard to avoid it but it, it, it paid off the, the final day after a slow start you know that's a pretty good um you know i guess focal point to to talk about you know with um don't hope and wish and you got to know where the ball will go and that's i think that ties in nicely you know with your your convicted routine you know knowing exactly what it is you want and and then you know you mentioned visualizing so you know i can kind of fairly assume I think that you're visualizing exactly what it is you want and exactly uh, where you want the ball to go. Is that kind of part of, of that routine? Uh, oh, yeah, without a doubt, you know. And, and kind of overall, it just seems that weeks where um, I myself, I'm sure others um, as well, but uh, weeks where I really just put all my focus on my mind and all my focus on running good routines and all my focus on you know, maybe sticking a few of these mantras versus weeks where all I'm worrying about is, you know, positions in my golf swing. Um, without a doubt, you know, the results come when I'm working on my mind. Um, I guess I'll probably add, you know, my last goal, the mental goal I had last week was another another little saying that, you know, I wanted, I was going to walk away a winner without a doubt. Maybe not the winner, but a winner and I guess just by that saying reminded me that you know I couldn't really I wasn't in control of the results I wasn't in control whether or not you know the putts were going to go in or if things were going to happen but I was in control of you know if I was going to stand up and be 110% committed and confident with each you know each routine um, just to allow myself to be free you know and to perform and uh and that really helped me uh, last week. You know, after a rough start, I was, I think, one over par through six holes. And um, my play partner, John Ellis, was already five under for the day. And, you know, things were kind of spiraling in the wrong direction. Um, I just came off a horrible day on Saturday where I had good things happen, but my mind was just a wreck. And uh, it showed, I think that was the day I made the most bogeys. Um, I was probably, probably lucky to shoot with a shot. Um, but uh, I, I stood on the 7th tee, and I just, you know, said, you know, hey, we made a we made a commitment to walk away a winner this week, and that's what we're going to do. And, and uh, you know, I turned my mind around right in the ship real fast with five birdies, you know, which was just lucky. I mean, I could always make the putts, but I was just thrilled to death that I played those last 12 holes, you know, um, in a mindset that was so, you know, championship worthy. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, can we go a little deeper on that? I mean, really, you you finished, obviously, as you said, really, really strongly, and, and you kind of went with the mantra of, you know, walking away a winner last week, and obviously that uh, came through for you. So, you know, what was your your level of or what was different about those last few holes i mean were you sort of really digging in so to speak and focused on on you know what it was you wanted to have as an outcome or were you really 
just kind of letting it happen on each individual shot? Oh, I mean, I was definitely just letting it happen on each each shot. You know, I wasn't, I, I had no care of the outcome at that point. I guess more or less I was able to displace any fear or hesitancy or worry of whether or not I was going to win or do good or, you know, any of those thoughts, you know, that kind of seep in the back of your mind. Um, I I just kind of raised my arousal level a little bit, you know, almost got a little angry. It was like, you know what, I'm, I'm done with all this garbage yeah poison and uh you know i'm just gonna just see you know see a shot you know fill it and, and, and execute you know the best i can and so it was that kind of that, that motivation that helped me just to you know to be freer to just run free routines i think um you know hmm. free routines i guess you could talk forever about but you know somebody would call it the zone or whatever i just was trying to get my mind into a spot to give me a chance to perform optimally Okay, um, you know it's you're, you're describing a you know a very interesting mindset, and I think it's you know kind of consistent with most players when you talk about that ideal performance state, and you know you were fearless and free and sort of letting it happen on each shot, but at the same time, in the background there was kind of a a determined focus and motivation, as you said. Um, to sort of achieve whatever achievement meant, even though you couldn't control the outcome, you could control each shot, and you were focused on on executing really, really well. It's kind of I, I just it's an interesting combination I find of of delivering that kind of carefree but still really focused on playing well. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, I found in a few of the tournaments I've won. I, I was so into a, just like into a continuum of running, you know, routines, just committed routines of, you know, walking up, finding the ball, you know, seeing what you got, seeing the picture in the shot, feeling it, hitting it, you know, accepting what happens and doing it over and over that, you know, I almost like, I almost get done and, you know, like in Saskatoon, for instance, um, just had a little fear creep in on my approach shot on the last hole. Um, my, my playing partner who I was tied with, you know, left it short right on the front right fringe, and I kind of took a, a little safety. I took a safer target, but then I made just kind of a weak swing. And I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't mad uh, that I where I hit it. I was more, you know, frustrated that I was 110% committed to that shot. And said, so, you know, I got down to the green and I have a 50 footer, and I was like, this is going to be the best routine and the most confident putt of the entire week. Like, this is what's happening, you know. And uh, I hit a great putt. And, you know, I was a little frustrated I didn't make it. I, you know, I, was, I, I had the read and whatnot. But, you know, as soon as I got tapped in, I was like ready to go to the next hole. I was like, man, I'm, I was thinking I might be in a playoff, which was perfect. I was like, I'm ready to go to that first tee, and I'm, you know, I want to make a fearless swing on that tee. I want to run this routine and you know, pick a target. And, swing fearlessly right at it um you know so it's kind of the type of attitude that i find i've had a lot i mean i remember a couple of years ago i won a tournament down in the states and you know i got done and i went to the range just to run a couple more routines before the award ceremony because it was so close to being 110 percent free like that's all i wanted all week yeah so uh yeah you know, my mind was it was so far from you know money or trophies or whatnot Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I want to come back to uh, you know Marion. I know you had you had mentioned that that sort of influenced your performance in some way, and I'm just kind of wondering, you know, how how does that influence your performance and contribute to you know winning on the PGA Tour Canada? Is it you know getting a taste of that big stage again? Um, or is it sort of motivation, or what? Is, what does that experience do that sort of gets you in a different frame of mind? Well, a few different things. I, I guess 
just number one, you just touched on motivation, without a doubt. Uh, I haven't played in a tour event in three years. I think my last PGA event was the 2010 Byron Nelson. So, you know, I hadn't been inside the ropes for uh, a long time, and uh, it was a huge reminder of why I play golf, why I'm still continuing to, you know, fight and grind it out every day. Um, and uh, it motivates you to get out there because uh, I know all the guys out there. I know that I belong and can play out there. Um, and you forget that when you're, you know, out sifting around on the barbecue tours and just trying to stay afloat. Uh, so that was, that was huge for me just to get back out there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then secondly... The, uh, I mean, it's just plain and simple. I mean, you're playing at a, you're playing at a golf course, you know, a USGA event that is, you know, set up to be probably the hardest that you'll, you'll ever see of any tournament. You know, you got to stand up in front of galleries that you haven't been playing in front of, and uh, you know, you got Heather left and Heather right, and you got a tiny little fairway, and you got to stand up there and be like, you know, I'm the best player in the world. I'm gonna rip this ball down the center of the fairway. You know, so it's that's a, a a great challenge. It's a good challenge to get comfortable uh, in coming yeah. from you know our level. And, uh, and with that said, you know when you return out of out of something like that, it makes everything around you feel easier, whether you realize it or not. Yeah. And hmm. I you know, I was fortunate enough. I, I played in the U.S. Open in 2005 at Pinehurst, and uh, I beat one guy. And I remember I was. I remember leaving there, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I thought, you know, I was horrible. And I kind of unknowingly just kind of tripped upon a couple wins, three or four the rest of that year, and had one of the best years I had as a professional. And um, so I kind of had that experience to, or I'm trying to use that experience right now as we speak. Um, I figured that, you know, good things would happen. Uh, I see it happen for I have seen it happen for all my friends in the past, you know, eight years or so since I was at Pinehurst. I see everybody who makes the Open, they proceed to, you know, play great golf, they win, they have great years. Um, so I'm trying to feed off of it without thinking too much about it. Yeah. Um, but yep. there's just so many things that you can take from that experience. It's so vitally important. Um, I've tried... I probably tried too hard. Um, ever since I made the Open in 05, I tried, <laughs> tried real hard to to get back into that just because it, it just gives you a definite boost. Yeah, okay. And how about your, you know, how's your mindset now compared to when you played PGA Tour in 2009? I mean, obviously that wasn't one of your best years. Do you feel that you are thinking much better now than you did then? I think I definitely have the potential to uh, to have a, um, a stronger mind on, on tour now than I did then. Um, you know, I've had a long career. I'm getting, getting pretty old, but uh, <laughs> I my mind was super sharp the, the end of the 2008 season and uh, all the way through Q School. Um, it was right where, you know, I wanted it to be. And... Uh, it was pretty sharp heading out on the tour that year. You know, unfortunately, I had a lot going on. I'd gotten engaged. I was getting married. You know, I had um, an instant family with three wonderful stepkids. I had a lot a lot of things come on me at the same time. Yeah. And with the way the tour works, um, I, made, I made my first cut. I played well at the Sony, just not well, but the final 27 holes. And out in Hawaii, and then after that, I missed a few cuts by a couple shots, and then kind of go into a wall where you don't get into any tournaments. And and I unfortunately let my mind, you know, kind of wander. It's kind of like, oh, why, are, why aren't things going that well? Should I, you know, you start thinking, and once you start thinking, you kind of go downhill. Um, you know, I worked on a few things, and you know, other than. Um, I had a few decent events that year on the nationwide tour. I had a couple chances to win, and uh, you know, but it took it, it took it took me a while to recover from that. Uh, my mind yeah. kind of just slowly dwindled. My confidence started to to fall, and uh, you know, all for the wrong reasons. But 
you know, I've learned a lot of lessons from that. Yeah. And uh, I learned that probably the, you know, the biggest issue with, with uh, 2009 was just, uh, you know, I kind of, I guess, kind of telling myself I betrayed myself. I didn't believe in myself the way I, I deserved to, to be believed in. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I want to go back out on tour and believe in my game and who I am. And, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to doing that, hopefully, at some point. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think that's, uh, you know, it's a critical piece to believe in yourself and have that, well, self-belief, you know, that you are a player that belongs on, on tour and, and uh, you know, you, you can't get there if you don't believe you belong there. So I know you've done some work with uh, with Jay Brunza, and what can you tell me about your experience with him and, and the things that you've worked on? Yeah, Dr. Brunza's been great. Um, you know, I guess along with, you know, all golf performance or golf psychologist books, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, it's all just simple, dumb logic, more or less. But uh, yeah, Jay's, Jay's been, Jay's been um, he's been a great friend and a great companion. Um, you know, a lot of like personal traits. You know, I'm very, um, I'm wound pretty tight, type to type A. And, you know, so we work a lot on just just the way I, I handle things or. You know, whether I can, whether it's my roommate and I were talking today about the weather, about how, how someone like us, we, we'll look at the forecast, you know, 50 times before we, you know, before the day arrives, we'll, we'll have all of our rain gear, we'll be, you know, worrying about this, and, you know, we're watching the wind forecast, the rain, and then uh, we show up and uh, today it was a perfect day of weather, oh, yeah. and we carried 500 pounds of rain gear in our bags. We laugh because we're like, you know, there's the young guy that shows up that had no clue that the forecast was supposed, was going to be horrible and didn't even bring his rain gear to Canada and didn't even know it was supposed to be a bad day and he just goes out and has fun and, you know, shoots five under par. And, yeah. And uh, so that's kind of an example of, you know, Dr. Bones is real good at just kind of hearing what's going on. When I call him up and talk to him, he'll be like, man, you sound like you're real uptight. You know, you're fretting about every little thing. You're trying to make golf perfect, trying to make your life perfect when there's no chance for that to occur. Right. You know, anytime you're trying to make golf and life perfect, um, you know, you're going to lose. Um, so, you know, we'll work on that, on that, on, on traits like that. I'm um, trying to keep me free. And probably visualization is his biggest his biggest um, attribute that he's brought to me. We, I have like a few recordings that I'll I'll listen to at night. That'll, that's obviously I can't have them with me every night. That maybe it'll take me down and, uh, um, you know, just kind of lower the heart rate and uh, yeah, just kind of uh, you know visualize uh, about you know twelve fifteen minutes every night. Just just to try to get the mind you know free and. Uh, picture myself uh, doing some good things so is that uh, that visualization is that primarily uh, you're around the next day you're you're kind of visualizing shots on on that particular course or in, and tied into your game plan or do you also spend time you know visualizing your career and where you'd like to be playing uh, yeah I can it can vary. I mean, a lot of times, you know, I'll, be, I'll go through and visualize the course, visualize, you know, different conditions. Um, maybe I'll just picture myself hitting shots if I'm not hitting it that well. Um, you know, maybe I've had a little hectic week or, you know, I've just, I haven't had a second to think. I'll, I'll really just use it to kind of just lower the heart rate and just kind of try to find a, you know, peaceful, peaceful mindset just to kind of be in or, and uh, just to kind of slow things down, you know, just to get some rhythm back and even picture some rhythm at golf swings, whatnot. Okay. But uh, kind of whatever you want to use it for. I mean, yeah, maybe sometimes I'll picture myself, you know. I don't know if I necessarily picture it, you know, picture myself winning or winning on tour right now. Obviously, I picture myself um, being confident and uh, hitting – great shots on tour and stuff like that. I guess maybe I do. Maybe I just don't realize what happens. Yeah. Happens. Okay. Well, I'm just it curious. Usually, it just usually leaves me in a, in a pretty good mindset and kind of refreshed. Yeah. 
Okay. And the recordings that you had mentioned as well, what uh, what type of stuff is that? Is that, uh, you know, is it uh, it's audio stuff, obviously. Is it, What does that sort of do for you? Um, well, Jay will, Jay will help me with the, with, with, the, with the recording, you know. I'll kind of tell him, um, you know, certain phrases, maybe a few of the phrases we talked about earlier, you know. He'll, yeah. He's just trying to almost take me down. It's not like it's not necessarily hypnosis, but uh, you know, he'll just mention some key things that I'll say, and you know, some, some peaceful attributes. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just kind of a just kind of a personal recording, you know. Okay, I so let it's... my wife listen to it once, and that's about it. The rest of it's just me. Yeah, so it's kind of a combination of you know relaxation stuff and some affirmations in there. Um, maybe some, yeah. you know, the mantras, as you say, and and some visualization stuff, maybe. Yeah, without a doubt. Some really great stuff here, Will. I, uh, you know, the stuff that you're using, I think, is really powerful, and I think it's uh, obviously it's a strong contributor to what has made you successful um, this past week. Anything, just kind of to wrap things up, anything in particular that stands out that maybe we didn't talk about tonight that, um, you know, is a, a strong contributor to, to your success and when you're playing your best? Um, no, I mean, I think we touched on it. You know, I think, you know, when I just play golf and I'm just focused on getting more free on the golf course, just, uh, you know, just more fearless, just running more, for, you know, fearless routine. Um, that just seems to be the biggest for me. When I'm, like I said, when I'm going down the road of mechanics or, trying to make my swing perfect, you know, <laughs> the pursuit of perfection or trying to take myself to the next level. You know, those are kind of two sayings that Dr. Brunswick pretty much will hang the phone up on if I say either of those. You know, if, I've had, I mean, if I've had down those paths of getting to the next level or, you know, having a perfect swing, he pretty much just laughs at me. Yeah. Um, so when I'm just, you know, focused on getting free and keeping my mind free and being able to react to the target um, fearlessly, that's that's when, uh, you know, good things are going to happen. Yeah. Okay, great. Any final advice that you might give to uh, to the listeners that are looking to improve on, you know, how they think about their game? Anything that you think would be kind of common for everyone or something simple that, that people could work on? Uh, you know, I just tell people, uh, don't be afraid to work on the mind. Um, you know, everybody loves to go to the range and think that it's all a physical problem, but, uh, you know, don't uh, be afraid to work on uh, on your mind because that's, that's obviously where it's at. Most most viewers know that. Switching between the years, not hitting a few more range balls. That was Will Collins from the PGA Tour Canada following his 2013 Dakota Dunes Open Championship performance. I'm Brett Taylor. Thanks for listening.